All right, we are back. Episode three zero, episode 30 of Box to Box. Uh, super excited to be here. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jose Tejas. I am the host of Box to Box. I am joined by one of our mainstay hosts, Andre, a.k.a. Coach Dre. Got the Real Madrid jersey on. Uh, big week for La Madridistas. On the other end of that spectrum, we also have a big Liverpool fan in the house, Rashad, a.k.a. De Bronco. Bro, I am so glad that you are here. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. We're not going to jump into the Liverpool result here right off the bat. I'm not going to piss you off to this interview. But uh, I'm, I'm super glad that you're here, bro. Um, how are you doing? How's this week going for you? Man, it was going good into the Real Madrid-Liverpool <laughs> game. You know, that was embarrassing. I was live streaming it. And, you know, you know like you said, the Twitch chat, that was on my head. I uploaded a short on TikTok, like my whole reaction. And people on TikTok, they on my head, too. It's like, oh, man. Damn, bro. But, man, I've been pretty good, though. I've been pretty good. That's good, bro. I mean, like, I, I tried to let, you know, those midweek results upset me too much because, bro, I've, I've been there. And as a Barcelona fan, I've seen the worst of the worst. We've been come back on multiple years. Liverpool dealt us one of the biggest comebacks of all time. Trust me, bro. I, my, I'm so desensitized to losing like that. It just is what it is. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, bro. Um, crazy week, crazy week of football, crazy week in general, bro. MLS is starting this weekend. The kids mm-hmm. just dropped. Everybody's doing their tier lists. I know you had one. We're going to talk about it. Um, but look, just to kind of get people right to the action and most viewers know what I'm going to ask already. And I'm going to tee you up this way. You can answer it however you see fit. Um, Rashad, who are you today, bro? Who am I today? I've been thinking it's, that's a, like I said, that's a super deep question (laughs) and I'm thinking hard about it, but I can tell you like me as a person right now, I'm still finding myself as Rashad. I'm still finding myself at who I am, but the Bronco. The Bronco is that YouTube creator with 90K subscribers striving to hit 100K. I like all sports, follow all sports, talk about any sports. It's just, yeah, I can't. You got to come back to me at the end for me to like fully <laughs> digest that question because that's just a hard flowing, question. Right? Yeah, there yeah you that's go. a hard yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, 100%, bro. And hey, look, it's intentionally a deep question. I think, you know, I, I like to, I think people always kind of define themselves by the work they do, especially in this country. You know, Andre and I are Mexican-American and that's just not the vibe down there. A lot of people don't define themselves by the work they do. It's more about the values they have. So when I ask that question, you know, my goal is to get a little bit deeper because, you know, so many people here define themselves that way. Uh, but look, bro, we're, the one thing we all have in common, we're fans of the beautiful game. And that's yeah. why I wanted to bring you on to this show. I wanted to help tell your story, your videos, your channel, you as a person, you're super unique, man. Uh, we haven't had too many creators on this channel who have like a very in-depth sports background, right? They, they watch a lot of sports. They've done content across a number of sports. Bro, you've been creating YouTube content for a couple of years now. So, I mean, first off, before I jump into my questions, and I, I do want to start from the beginning. Um, bro, with your channel, I mean, you you almost specifically focus on fan reactions. Like, just before we jump into where it all started, like, what was the motivation for for launching the channel to begin with? Did you, I don't know. Did you have, like, a lot of hot opinions and hot takes, and your friends were like, hey, bro, you, you got to let the world see this because this is great. <laughs> Now, I do have a lot of hot opinions and hot takes, not just across sports, just across anything. <laughs> a whole bunch. Of, I'm always arguing or debating with friends and stuff. But I'm going to say what's on my mind regardless. I don't care what anybody has I to love say. It. I'm going to say what's on my mind. But um, when I first started the channel, I just did it because during COVID, I ain't had nothing to do. And I seen people do reaction videos on YouTube and whatnot. I was like, well, I mean, I might as well try. Why not? It seems like a fun thing to do. I I didn't expect to get any views. I didn't expect to do none of that. So I originally started, I'm a UFC fan and basketball. So I originally started reacting to um fights after the UFC fights ended. I'll react to that like as soon as the fight ends. So when people type in the highlights, my video can pop up. Yep. So I did that. And then I also did it with the playoffs during the little bubble uh, in 2020, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I'm from Dallas, so I'm a Mavericks fan. So I was reacting to Luca heavy. Yes, sir. He hit that buzzer beater against the Clippers. That Sick. video, that was probably like one of my first videos that got past probably 5,000 views, I think. And that's what really like kept me pushing after that video hit off. Yeah, bro. I, I mean, it's kind of crazy. I mean, I, I think, I don't know where your first videos were when you started, like, I don't know, like, like in week one, week two, month one. Um, but now, like, if you go back deep into your channel and you look at the first videos, I mean, they all have at least, you know, a couple thousand views. I mean, do you ever go back and, I don't know, just watch the first ones to see how you've evolved as a content creator? 
Yeah, I do that all the time. I, I'm always looking at old stuff. I'm a nostalgia thing. I always get nostalgic <laughs> over everything. And I yeah, I look back at how far I came, and it's just it's it's crazy that I'm here in this position. Sometimes I gotta appreciate where I'm at. Cause you know, sometimes I'll wish that I was like in a higher position than where I am, but I'll look back and like, dang, I would have never guessed that I'll be in a position that I am right now. Yeah, no, that's awesome. It's crazy. Yeah, we we talk about it on the show uh, when we have other guests too, like the whole imposter syndrome, right? Of like, sometimes you just like go, 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 and you're developing content and you're growing and you just like life happens so fast that sometimes it's good to take a step back and be like, shit, like where I came from to where I'm now, like where I'm now at. Like that's yeah. fucking big ups, you know what I mean? So, um, no, that's that's awesome that you realize it and that you you realize the impact that you've had on your viewers, but also on yourself, right? Because yeah. it's not and it's not just about what you put out, but also about your own brand, right? Your own personal yeah. growth. So that's that's tight to see, man. That's awesome. Yeah, and look, I, I before I have a question that I want to ask that starts at the beginning. Before I get there, you mentioned watching back your old videos. I'll be honest, bro. I for the life of me, I can't go back and watch my old stuff. It's, it feels <laughs> cringe. Like, it's just like, <laughs> mm, like, why did I say that? You know, or why did, why did mm. I position it that way? I don't know, bro. It, it, that's just me though. I mean, do you ever think the same thing? See, for me, it's the opposite. Back in like, when I first started, I was real calm and mellowed out. You know, I ain't want to go too, too overboard. I ain't want to be like those cringe YouTubers, you know, that was popular yeah. or not. So I was just pretty cool, laid back and doing it. But now if I look at videos now, I'll put like, extra extra energy into it just to like just be a little bit over the top sometimes you know yeah yeah no that's good bro i'm, I'm still getting comfortable you know doing all of that i think not that i don't want to go back and watch my content i think that any creator who wants to get bigger and grow and, and you want to get better at what you do you should go back watch the game tape mm -hmm. right learn what you're doing how you can do it better uh, but yeah, man, I'm still in that cringe phase of like, just, just trying to, <laughs> to not just like really crunch up whenever, uh, whenever I watch it, but who knows, bro, we'll get there. Um, all right. So let's start at the beginning. I, I always, I kind of move from the, who are you today into where the channel all started. You mentioned you, you started it during COVID. Um, so you started with, you know, different kind of fan reactions, mainly fighting NBA. Mm -hmm. When did you start incorporating soccer stuff? I don't know who did it or who said it, but I was probably like, three months into it, maybe two or three months into it. Mm -hmm. And somebody just typed in, it was like react to, uh, what was the video? I know recently I, I want to say it was a messy video, but then when I checked back and actually checked back, it was a, um, skills. It was a skills video. It was like embarrassing skills that changed the player career or something like that, or uh, <laughs> skills that ruined this player career. So I saw all the ankle breakers and all yeah. the roulettes and all of this. And that put me onto the sport immediately. And like, I liked what I was seeing immediately. I immediately got hooked and that video hit off too. And more and more people started typing and asking me to react to this person, this person, this skill or these type of goals, last minute moments and stuff like that. Dude, that's yeah, awesome. I, it's, it's crazy because you're the first person that we've had on the show that's so unique in the sense that like you're versatile as hell. Like you can cover different sports and also different types of videos, right? Like there's people who develop content very specifically, like for example, FIFA opening a pack or, you know, keep like talking about like kits and like different cleats and culture like that, like apparel. Very niche. Where, yeah. yeah. Whereas you are like, <clears throat> fuck it. Like give me something and I'll talk about it. Like you're not <laughs> scared to go there. You know what I mean? It's just tight. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Where does that come from, though? Like, yeah. like, I mean, what are you just like, are you constantly surfing socials and the Internet and be like, all right, I'm pretty knowledgeable about this. I could do a reaction about that. Or or are you just like, bro, things come to me. I'm not scared to speak my mind and I'm just going to I'm just going to tell it like it is and hope that people like it. That's what it is. I just say, I just say what's on my mind. I cut the camera on, say what's on my mind. Like That's I say, I awesome. always debate with my friends. It don't matter what it is. And I'm also <laughs> on social media too. So I know I'm always up to date on all the topics and stuff like that. And I always, I got my Twitter account, not my, uh, the Bronco account. I got a whole personal account. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm always arguing with people on, on different topics <laughs> and stuff. So I must, I'm gonna just say what I got to say. And this, and it translates to YouTube. That's, that's dope. I like that a lot. Um, so the community, bro, the communities have to be different, right? Like I, I imagine you mentioned someone plugged in, uh, you know, uh, dropped a video, a soccer specific video in the comments, you want to go react to it. And maybe that starts getting you into it. But how did, how did the comments change? I mean, when you introduced live streams, did you feel like the soccer community is just built different? In my opinion, oh, yeah. they are, bro. They're, they're a yeah, different definitely. breed of people. Um, some good, some bad, but like, like there are different <laughs> breed of people. Like how, how accepting have they been of you as a creator? 
most of them been they've been pretty accepting. They they love me to react to their favorite players and favorite teams. And even after the uh you know the Liverpool game just ended, people are like Bronco, it's not too late to be a Arsenal fan. It's not too late to change the team. <laughs> I mean, it's come nice. over here. To, yeah, it ain't. Well, I, oh, 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 I don't know about all that, but yeah, people <laughs> talk about oh, come be a Man United fan and all of this. You know, they it's been a lot of accepting people. Then of course it's like. A equal amount of people who's not as accepting, like, oh, why is this idiot reacting to our sport? He's a stick to basketball. He's a stick to <laughs> America. You get a lot, bro. I, I get a, yeah, I get Damn. a lot of comments like that. But, you know, I'm, I tune all that out. They don't really phase me. I laugh at it, honestly, because when I first started getting hate comments, when I first started, especially on the UFC and basketball, because – I talk about their favorite player or talk trash about their favorite fighter or something like that. So they're salty, they'll, yeah. Yeah, salty, and they'll leave a hate comment. They were just like me. I was like, dang, I made it. I'm getting hate comments. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it made me feel good. Yeah. And now, in a, you know, the football community, but they could be way more harsher in this football community when it comes oh, to like, dude, yeah. trash talk, especially on TikTok, because mainly on YouTube, everybody like, oh, I've seen this dude before. But on TikTok, that's like a whole nother community of new people and they like bro why is he why is this american a uh, liverpool fan he should stick to mls <laughs> and stuff like that i get it's it's just all types of hate comments and stuff is like that, that is that the biggest difference you think between the youtube people and the tiktok community um in terms of what like 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 would you say they're just like they're Take a little more harsh they expect oh, yeah, more yeah, definitely. from you okay. yeah Tik tiktok people way more they not they more non accepting youtube people they accept and they're like oh yeah come on now oh, we can teach you a little something, something. but tiktok <laughs> people is like bro why are you reacting to this you know like <laughs> stick fair. with basketball and nfl that's how it is over there oh so, man <laughs> we need more people like you this community needs more people who are willing to be like you know what and I wanted to see more of this during the World Cup. And so I, I was, I don't know why I thought this was going to happen a lot where, you know, because Rashad, you and I met before the World Cup. And then, yeah. you know, I was, I was trying to see, okay, how many new creators or, or creators are going to shift from like another sport into this sport trying to cover the World Cups. It's so big. I saw a couple or a yeah, few, stars, maybe so. I wasn't plugged into YouTube as much as I should have been. But like, I don't know. Did you see anybody that was trying to do what you did make that transition? I mean, I seen a couple of big creators like make they'll probably like make one or two videos about it like say they a 2k youtuber they'll try mm -hmm. and like make a fifa video and kind of like collab with another fifa creator or something like that but in terms of like the actual games i didn't really see anybody like you know try to dip into it mm -hmm. yeah because you, you have some videos that run deep bro like like i remember i did get some champions league videos and i'm just like bro the moments in this are like old as hell like you really had to have been following the game for a while um to really not just react to it, but to know the players that are involved, the teams that are involved, how big the situation was. I mean, as recently as like, I know some kids who follow the sport today can't recall the Chelsea Barcelona game from 09 that pissed everybody off. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they went to the final, um, you know, th there's all kinds of, of those. I remember the, the one specific video, the biggest like blunders um, yeah. in, in football history. Um, and, you know, and you reacting to all of those. Um I just, I don't know. I was hoping to see more of that in the world's biggest event, but I don't know. Maybe we're still a casual, you know, fan um, country, I guess you could I, say. I also think that people are just comfortable with, like, they stay in their lane in a way, right? Like, you're comfortable talking about one team or one player or, or a specific scenario, right? Or like Champions League, period. Whereas, like, you know, uh, people like you, Rashad, you, you're open to, like, whatever's happening in the moment, right? Or, like, yeah. the MLS is about to start. You do the, uh, you know, the ranking of the kits or whatever it is. Like, I'm sure that it's all cyclical, right? Like depending on the calendar, I'm sure when we get close to the 2026 World Cup, you're going to probably start talking about it a lot more. Um, but I also feel like people are just very specific and like they stay in their lane. So we definitely need more people like you to break it, break out and out of the mold. Um, do you ever get scared, Rashad, by the way? Um, just to piggyback on what Andre said, do you ever get scared about like introducing a new video and what that will do for the algorithm or for your channel great question. along those lines? Yeah. Well, like pretty much any MLS video that I do, not really gonna do good in terms of mm -hmm. algorithm and stuff like that, or with my subscribers. Because what I was finna say along the lines of the past thing that you just brought up, in terms of like introducing the sport to more people in America, on social media, stuff is like so divided and competitive. It's like people don't wanna like it. Like they yeah. absolutely don't wanna like it. Like when the Super Bowl and on the other spectrum, when the Super Bowl was happening, the whole soccer slash football community, they was like, they don't wanna like it. It don't matter what's happening, we go hate on it regardless. We don't wanna watch that. When the World mm -hmm. Cup final was happening, you had Americans on uh social media or like NBA or NFL fans that was like, bro, that is lame, bro. Like 
it, it don't matter what you say. You're not going to convince some of these people, you know, that to watch the sport or actually enjoy, like, what they're mm-hmm. watching. That's sad, man. And it, it, it's – well, because it always has to be a comparison, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah, oh, you talk, you talk about yeah, the Super Bowl? Yeah. I, I, like me, I, I'm an American football fan. Andre is too. And, like, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll go watch a game or whatever. But then automatically it becomes, well, it's not the World Cup. Well, yes, it's not the exactly. world's biggest sporting event. I'm like, right. so what? It's not. Yeah. It's not comparable. Why are we choosing to compare it? It doesn't make any sense, you know. So, I don't know. I feel like it's it's it should be okay for fans to appreciate multiple sports, multiple games. Um, it's the competition that I think we love most as as sports fans. It's just yeah. being able to 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 appreciate athletes and what they do, regardless of the field or the arena. Yeah, it is facts. No, that's true. That makes a lot of sense. So, with that said, though, um, let me go back. I kind of, you know, we went off on a little bit of a tangent there, but going back to the um, starting at the beginning and how the community has kind of welcomed you since moving over into soccer fan reactions. um, You're a Liverpool fan. How did that happen? Um, (laughs) Did it come from just and 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 really just to piggyback on that, the Liverpool fandom and maybe you're a fan of multiple teams. I think American football fans or American soccer fans, however you see it, we have a very unique ability and opportunity to appreciate multiple teams. Andre is a Real Madrid fan and a Leeds United fan. And we can kind of pick from league to league. I am a Barcelona fan and an Arsenal fan. Uh, and even in Germany, I'm a Dortmund fan. I don't, I don't root for Bayern. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, it, it's just uh, as, because we don't grow up in those countries. It's like we, we get a chance to kind of almost pick and choose who, which team we're going to support. And it can be for a number of different reasons. So I don't know. I mean, like when you you have bro, you're, you're moving from traditional sports content into soccer specific content. Where do you start with picking a favorite team, and how'd you land on Liverpool? In terms of me picking a favorite team, that was easy because LeBron is my favorite player, and LeBron has state he part owner or whatever in Liverpool. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that was easy. I'm I'm a Liverpool fan. It's King Sick. James, and you picked a good time to be a Liverpool fan. I was going to say one of the best runs of all time. Yeah, but then awesome. now is now. <laughs> you know what just what just happened, but yeah. And, and in terms of Serie A, he just bought stock in uh, AC Milan, so I'm like, okay, well, mm-hmm. I root for the AC Milan in the uh, Serie A. With the La mm-hmm. Liga, I was a fan of. Uh, everybody was always so confused when they see me with the jersey on. It was um Bill Bow, Athletic Club Bill Bow. <laughs> no shit. Okay. Yeah, it was All because right. of FIFA. Like my FIFA, my career player, I had played for that team, so. That Bro, was that, dude, that's I sick. haven't heard an American say that they're a Bilbao fan in forever. And what's crazy about that team is like most people don't even realize like like, like the requirements to be a player. Yeah, on you that gotta team. be. You gotta be from the Basque country. That's yeah, crazy. Exactly. Man. Like, like I, I think that to do that and to stay in the top flight of Spanish football, I mean, I think they always give the top teams a run for their money. Whether it's yeah. Madrid, yeah. Barcelona, they always keep the games competitive. And they always finish top of the table for sure. Like, yeah, and yeah, they've top. won. They've yeah, won crazy, some. Right there. Couple other rays, they they're, they've made some deep runs uh, as well in in European competition. So it's it's crazy to see that, but that's awesome, man. Yeah, bro. I mean, I haven't heard someone say, "Yeah, bro, I'm a Bilbao <laughs> fan." That, that, yeah. that's, that's I was not expecting. I, I thought he was yeah. going to say something like Atletico of Madrid or something. I was like, oh, uh, no, no. <laughs> get him out of here. Think, I don't Atletico. think anybody does. Like to, to be honest, that's I have a some really of my good friends point. Who say like, "Oh yeah, I'm, I'm an, an Atletico, Atletico fan. fan." I'm like, "No, you're. Are not. you really? No, I don't know." <laughs> um, I don't know, bro. It's 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 easily one of from my from my personal standpoint, and probably from Andres, one of the most hated fan bases of all time. Right, um, from Madrid. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, for sure. But Leti, yeah. I think so. Absolutely. Um, I think a lot of people who support like just Spanish football in general, they're an easy team to hate because of how they play the game. Yeah, mm. yeah, because yeah, they're coach. Boring, so- the yeah, always trying to fight, you know. Yeah, yeah. They, they all played the same way that Simeone played as a, when he was a player before he was their coach. They all played the mm-hmm. same way. Like they're trying to fight, they're trying to nag the ref. Like yeah. they play dirty. Like, ah, oh, dude, they'll they make it less so about annoying. the play and yeah. more about just being disruptive. Like, like how yeah, can I get exactly. in their head? How can I play the okay. mental game? Can I be physical? And and look, bro, for some teams that works. Like mm-hmm. I get it. But when I think about the teams that I support as, as being a fan here in America. It's like when I was a kid, I was like, all right, which which style of play do I like to watch? I, I didn't even understand the game that well back then, right? I was a kid. It was just what looks good when I watch it being played. And it was so hard not to fall in love with Barcelona's style of play. It was so yeah, hard not to I fall bet. in love with Arsenal's style of play. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, so I don't know, man. I like asking the question because I think it's always, uh, it's always interesting to see where, you know, American fans sit on that spectrum and where, um, you know, how they became a fan and how it got brought to this game. So I have a, a just a 
kind of a caveat question, but I'm, I've been thinking about the fact that you're, you love multiple sports because I do too. And Jose kind of alluded to that, you know, we were NFL fans as well. <clears throat> I grew up in Chicago where it also, I think you're, you're, you're almost like a byproduct of your upbringing, right? Like living in a city like Chicago with so much passion for their sports teams. Like you can't see behind my screen, but I've got all my bobbleheads, like Cubs, Blackhawks, Bulls, mm. you name it, right? So if you were to rank your favorite sports, I know you mentioned basketball, but like, what would it be in terms of like, okay, this is a must. I have to watch every single game. And then, you know, going down the list uh, to like, maybe you watch the playoffs or whatever it is. Would oh, you say like no, ba- basketball for sure? Nah, it's not basketball. A lot of what people always get through off and I say that number one is NFL. I got, I'm a Cowboys fan. You okay. Know? I'm not a bandwagon. I'm from Dallas. Okay. So same, I'm same. Cowboys Freedom fan. boys. All right. Yeah, <laughs> and I watch every single game. Like, I have to watch every single game. That's what I'm most passionate for. You got NFL at number one for me. And then number two is the NBA. I'm a Mavericks fan and a LeBron fan. So when people say, oh, blah, 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 LeBron, LeBron, ain't you a Mavericks fan? Yes, I like Luka and them. I'm a Mavericks fan, but I'm a LeBron fan too. LeBron is my favorite player. But yeah. I'm from Dallas, and the Mavericks is my favorite team. And yep. then number three, my favorite sport is, well, it's not really a team sport, but number three is combat sports, like MMA or boxing. For sure. That's my favorite. I go for all the locals. Like my favorite boxer is Earl Spence. He's from Dallas. But MMA, it's not really any local people from MMA, but my favorite um, MMA fighter, they go by divisions, you know. But overall, sure. it's John Jones, but I don't know if I can say that in this climate because, you know, he was just kind of <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> no, you're not going to get canceled. He's coming back. You're not, he's coming yeah, back. dude. He's, yeah, he's not is. gone, dude. He's coming back for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, and then at number four, we got uh, soccer. Nice. Like, like it, bro. I like I love it. it. How, so with, with soccer being fourth, I mean, and Andre kind of asked the question this way, how many games would you say you tune into? Mm-hmm. I mean, do you think Champions League attracts you the most? Is it the Premier League? And, and how many games League, do you think you're watching? Champions, Champions League? League definitely attract me the most. Like, I just started this year tuning into the Premier League, like, weekly, or at least I try to tune in weekly. But, like, last just last year, I only tuned in to really Champions League games and big-time Premier League games, like when the big mm-hmm. six club playing each other or something like that. But now, yeah. when they show games, like, on USA Network, I'll tune it in if I'm up in time and I'll watch it and stuff like yeah. that. So, That's awesome. Yeah, it I can't is tough give you a number – but I basically like tune in on when they saw it on USA but, Network. More, yeah, more often than not, that's awesome. Do you think that just going off of that? Do you think that the World Cup helped the casual fan, right? And I'm using quotations, but do you think the World Cup helped, like, I don't know, maybe educate a little bit more um, those those fans that are like on like fringe fans, right? That are like, oh, the World Cup's on. Like, sure, I'll watch it. But like, maybe I'm not going to watch soccer for the next four years. Do you think that this World Cup that's coming up in the U.S. is going to be a vehicle for us to get those fans to get more eyeballs on the games? Do you think it's so? Sure. It should. It, it should be. I seen a lot of people on Facebook like when they first announced. Well, here in Dallas, you know, AT and T Stadium go be yeah. one of the stadiums. Host, so yeah. I seen a Facebook post that said that. And it was a lot of locals, like from Dallas. They was like, "Oh, I don't even watch soccer, and I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna make sure that I'm tuned in and Sick. I'm there." Okay. And um, after the past World Cup, you know, the one in Qatar, after that final, that final was so good. Sick. I seen yeah. a whole bunch of people like, "Bro, I don't like soccer, but that game was live." Even some of my <laughs> yeah. friends, they yeah. hit me up. He was like, "Bro, shot this soccer shit live," and you know, he don't really <laughs> watch. He don't watch soccer, nothing like that. He like, bro, this shit live. So I'm pretty That's sure when 2026 tune in, and they they be asking me, they be asking me, uh, when you gonna take me to a soccer game or whatnot, <laughs> you know? And I be like, all right, them 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 MLS. Well, I ain't gonna say all MLS, but I be like, them FC Dallas games don't be like them games on yeah. TV now. Cause I went to the um, I went to the Barcelona Juventus friendly that was down here in Dallas at the Cotton Bowl, and they mm-hmm. seen it on my Snapchat and stuff like that. They always tell me they're like, bro, you ho, bro, you know you can take this. <laughs> But I'm like, shoot, I don't know. I don't know if you want to spend a hundred dollars on a ticket. You know, this is I mean, soccer. I remember that game. The belly went crazy. Yeah, he did exactly. Mm-hmm. And I just reacted to him the day before that. They asked oh, him, shit. yeah, the day before that on stream, I reacted to him. And when I went there, that's when he he went stupid. At the damn, end. damn, bro. He said he was he was cutting UV defenders like it was nobody's yeah, business. Yeah, he was. Um, he, it was it was actually insane. I, I, that got me so excited for the season, and then like. Barcelona first half of the season kind of shit the bed, but it is what it is. We move on. <laughs> um, but yeah, bro. I mean, like that. That's what, those are actually really, really great questions. Um, when you know what's going to get the the average American fan, quote unquote, into this game? Um, I had a conversation with a buddy of mine on this topic, and he was telling me he's like, "Look, how I would do this is I don't know if you you think about it this way, and I'm, I'm curious to to know who your favorite. You mentioned LeBron being like your goat." who your favorite like individual player is on the soccer spectrum. But um, 
he kind of gave me some interesting advice. Like if I was ever talking to, to a casual sports fan would have been like, bro, have them start watching players first, just like yeah. individual players. Right. You mentioned like that yeah. skills, the, the ankle breaks and whatnot and those videos and how that got you really hyped about the game. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, is there it one, is there a favorite player that you love to watch? And then I don't know what, what made them your favorite player? My favorite player, well, he was before the World Cup happened. After all of that, after Bills and shit to bed and whatnot, my favorite player was Kevin DeBrunner. Like that, oh yeah, shit, Kevin DeBrunner, so I'll talk about every time when I tell my subscribers this, not my subscribers, yeah, I tell my subscribers this story all the time. Me and my girl, we was watching TV and Man City and Newcastle was playing, mm. and uh, Man City was down. What that was down? Oh two or something like that. I know that was down substantially in this season. Right? Two yeah, zero. Yeah, it was yeah, this season. Yeah. yeah, they were down and, two zero. Yeah, yeah, and they started coming back. And then I was going for Newcastle because I'm still thinking Liverpool is in the running, you know, for the time. Yeah. For that, y'all. <laughs> and, uh, so I'm going for yeah. Newcastle. And then I told her, I was like, the person who don't need the ball right now is that dude, Kevin DeBrunner, that dude who got it right there. Because wherever he want to pass it to, he go get the ball to him. And as soon as I said that, he did that little <laughs> through ball, ground ball, whatever to, uh, I forgot who scored that final goal. Was it Bernardo Silva or Gundogan? Uh, it was... For well, the final, final goal of the game came from Newcastle, but they went up oh, okay. three two. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. it might have been Bernardo. Yeah, Bernardo. Yeah, they looked through ball that he did to Bernardo, and then he Bernardo scored it. And then she was like, "Damn, he ought to be the best player on the pitch." Easy. I was like, "Yeah, he's yeah, the he usually so, so is." Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he usually is, bro. And that's, that's kind of cool, man. I don't get a lot of Kevin De Bruyne's, and I think it's because maybe you know people don't want to cheer for for city it's like you know the nfl argument like people don't want to cheer for the patriots bro because they've been winning for so yeah. long it's just kind of like annoying to cheer for them yeah. uh and, and equally I, some of those fans are annoying but <laughs> yeah i like yeah. midfielders man i like luca too before came to brunny it was luca madri because mm. yeah the 2018 world cup was going on and i just you know changed it on the tv trying to watch something i forgot which game it was but i know croatia was playing i think it was croatia and nigeria it could have been if they played in 2018 and Luka Modric was just on the field going crazy. The commentator kept talking about him and stuff like that. I was like, oh, this Luka dude cold. And then when I actually started reacting, they told me to react to him. And I was like, oh, I remember this dude from the 2018 World Cup. So he was just my favorite player. There by you go. Football. That was the year he won the uh, the Bayon d'Or. Bayon d'Or. It was to win that, to win that in the – I'm not going to call it peak Messi Ronaldo, um, but it still was at a time when Messi Ronaldo dominated those awards. The yeah. fact that he took one off of them, bro. Yeah, I that's mean, crazy. He'll, he'll forever be a person who could say he did that. Which, which I think the only other player that could say he did that was Kaká. Kaká sure. before them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like anybody, at any time in that 15 to 20 year span, it was always either Messi or Ronaldo. Yeah. So that, that that's wild, bro. It's kind of crazy. You picked a midfielder. So many people are just pick goal scorers, especially you know yeah. um, sports fans from 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 other sports coming into this game. Um, they just look at who the best winger is. A lot of people talking about Rashford or Mbappe or yeah. you know anybody else. Um, I don't know. I, I, who's your goat? My goat? Oh, Leo Neal. Leo Neal. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bro, me and me and Andre watched the World Cup final in New York. Um, we watched it live in New York, and it was it was still to this day one of the craziest experiences we've had because the whole bar, the whole yeah. bar packed like this with Argentina fans. Like, I mean, the, the, Andre was one of three people cheering for France. <laughs> like, like three, three whole he people, wrong. bro. But we happened to sit next to each other, which was great. Yeah. It was random. It was so random. Yeah. And I was like, wait, are you wearing a, a French jersey? We're all wearing like our jackets. We didn't want to be seen with our jerseys, bro. It was like, yeah. freaking wild. <laughs> but Argentinians, man, they rolled deep, man. It was, yeah. was kind of crazy. And then we, we get there. And I just remember when... I mean, that game was so back and forth. We all remember it, right? 2 0, then it's 2 2, then 3 2, then 3 3. And you're just like, you know, whatever. And, and like, mm -hmm. it, it's, I still remember just being so happy for Leo, man. So, yeah. so happy when the game was over for Leo. So, why, why Messi and not Ronaldo? Because even before the World Cup final, I was like, Messi got to be the GOAT because he could do everything. Like, he can dribble, pass, he can score, all of that. And he had seven batting doors. I was like, he got mm -hmm. seven when they first told me that? And I tried to equate that to NBA. I'm like, dang, he got seven MVPs. Like, yeah. you, can't, you can't dispute seven MVPs. <laughs> that was really <laughs> one of my main reasons right there. I know Cristiano got the Champions Leagues and whatnot, but I tried to equivalent that to NBA as well. I'm like, okay. So if somebody got five titles, how many uh, batting doors does Ronaldo have? At least he's got five, right? 
Five, yeah. Oh, he got five? Oh, yeah. This, yeah. Never mind. I can't even equate that to NBA because that's still <laughs> legit. <laughs> that's still legit. Five titles and five MVPs. But still, yeah. I was always just like, Lionel, he can do everything, bro. Like, Yeah. He really can, bro. I, I, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, I hate the comparison. And I've heard this Andre before, and we had this talk before. It's just like, it's not fair because Ronaldo is the hardest working man in the room always. Mm-hmm. And you're still just not going to be able to compete with someone who's just not from this planet. Like he just does things that are almost unexplainable. You can't really like understand how he did what he did, especially considering that he's five, five weighs next to nothing. Yeah. Um, and Ronaldo's a physical freak, right? Like he's a, a specimen, right? So um, I, I always think like, bro, we're not even comparing the two because I think they're both in their own stratosphere, but Messi, have, you know, he just can do things that, nobody else can really do yeah, it's exactly. almost you can't really explain it yeah. um but that's cool bro I, I like that you you've at least decided for yourself who's the go i've asked that question to a few different people on this pod people they don't want to answer it they're like they don't want to piss people off they're like oh, i kind of like both they're both great i'm like nah man just, just pick yeah, one man nah i say um, Missy, man it's basically <laughs> and because i can relate to him more because i'm short too i'm like five six and a half so i'm like yeah i like to see the, the short folk go out there and do their thing <laughs> The short kings, bro. Short kings, hundred yeah, exactly. percent, man. I, 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 I missed that a lot. Heavy, heavy. This is awesome, bro. Um, all right. Well, moving on to where you are today with your channel. In a couple of years, man, you've grown from zero, right, to nearly a hundred k subscribers. I mean, as yeah. your channel continues to kind of grow and scale up, I mean, is there anything you want to bring to this channel that you're not already talking about or already doing? It doesn't have to be football or soccer specific, but I don't know. Is there something you always wanted to kind of create content around that you haven't yet yeah i always want to go back to implementing basketball and uh mma videos back into the channel but i might just create a sep- a separate channel to do that because it's a lot of people who still hear from the basketball videos and they ask bro when you go do another basketball video i miss the basketball videos you know mm-hmm. i miss the ufc videos and stuff like that but it's like some people some football fans they are like intolerant if I make a video about something else, they were like, bro, we're here to see football. We're not here to see basketball and stuff like that. <laughs> I, I literally get comments like that. So I was like, bro, it's, I might just make a separate channel to do that. And then They're I also. Savage, savage, bro. Yeah, they real savage. And then I want to do more gaming stuff, too. I got a second channel for that. I did um, FIFA. I used to do FIFA My Career videos. Mm-hmm. But um, I actually stopped doing it. It took too long for me to edit and stuff like that. So I put that over to the second channel, but I stopped that. But I, I just want to play more games than FIFA because I, I kind of accidentally put my channel into a hole that kind of like restricted me to just soccer or football based content on some stuff. So mm, yeah. that second channel, my goal is just to turn that into doing whatever I want to do, basically. So speaking about that and going off uh, on a little tangent, but in terms of like, you know, I'll bring it back to what I was mentioning in terms of your own brand, right? Your own style. How would you say, um, I guess it's, it's more of a two part question. How would you say you've evolved from when you started and where do you see yourself going? Do you, do you anticipate changing it up, changing the style, changing the format, whatever it might be editing, you name it. Or are you like, all right, this is cool. This is where I envisioned I wanted to be for my own brand. What was the first part? Again? So we're, so when you started creating videos to where you're now, how has, how has your brand or your style evolved? And then okay. the second part is where you're now, is this where you want to be or do you want to like, kind of evolve as you go forward? Yeah, when I first started, it was just straight reacting. Like I actually wanted to branch out from reacting because now kind of I do like commentary. I guess that's how you could classify that as like classify, commentary. Yeah. Yeah, like watch so- alongs? Yeah, like I well, watch alongs, I kind of count that as reactions. Like when I used to do okay. my match week reviews or like game reviews or like that game, the LAFC and Philadelphia Union, and I would like, you know, tell the people what happened to summarize and come and yeah. tell basically what happened. Yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to start moving towards. You know, when I first started, it's just me watching the video and like, oh, you know, just yeah. giving my reaction basically. I wanted yeah. to move from that because I honestly, I don't, I didn't feel like, bro, that's not like real content. <laughs> Like, I didn't feel like if somebody asked me or somebody in my family asked me what I do, like, oh, I react to soccer videos. <laughs> like, you know, it just, I just don't feel good saying it, bro. I yeah, just that's want fair. to move on, evolve. Like, now that I have more knowledge of the sport and I can actually give my own opinion about it, I can just do commentary about it. So that's the difference that I do now. And I actually want to keep on evolving. I just want to do something that works. I see a lot of people 
I love the compliments that they give me when they were like, bro, Bronco, MLS should hire you, bro, or ESPN should hire you, bro. I don't know what is in my future. Or they be like, I'd rather listen to you than the MLS commentators. You know, I'm like, there you right, go. Yeah. give me on there to commentate a game. I, you know, Hell get yeah. on there and do whatever. But, yeah, I just want to evolve. I don't know. I don't have in my mind exactly where I want to be, but I just know I want to. I don't want to be doing reactions forever. Keep changing it up. All right, cool. Yes, keep changing it up. I like that, bro. Yeah. And, and that's a great point that you just mentioned, right? Like like people saying, bro, you, I find you more relatable than the people who are on TV talking about this. Mm-hmm. I yeah. wholeheartedly agree. I cannot stress this shit enough. I'm so passionate about it. I And this is why I started Goals TV to begin with. But Andre mm-hmm. and I talked about this, bro. We would like we were physically muting the pregame shows because the, I felt I was like, bro, they're just like tiptoeing around subjects. They don't want to like piss people off. So they talk about things like a very non-biased way. It's not even like common. It's so You're vanilla, bro. Into the game. Yeah, yeah it's so yeah. vanilla. It's just like, like, dude, create some drama. Like, like say something or have an opinion that's going to mm-hmm. be like, you know what? All right, bet. I'm going to tune in. Let's see if what you were right or if your prediction was right. And, and at least I'm, I'm more invested at that mm-hmm. point. Yeah. And this is why I think with, with Goals TV, like, this is why we're trying to do this. Like, I think. Creators like you are the future of this game. I really do. I, I, at least in North America, I don't. We don't have like this crazy hundred-year history of the sport being here, and all these players that we can use as like pundits and analysts. Like, I'm sorry, bro. Like the Gen Z generation doesn't think Alexi Lawless and Landon Donovan and Clint Dempsey and all those guys. I think they were bad players. Not, not even that they're bad pundits. They're just they're not relatable. Like mm-hmm. the next generation doesn't care what their opinions are because they didn't grow up watching them. But they're watching your videos. They're watching your fan reactions. And you're like, you know what? This guy's got opinions that I either, I, I, I'm either I locked in with, right? I, I fuck with those opinions. I'm cool. I support. And you're, that's why you're there. Or the Broncos stupid, doesn't know what he's talking about, <laughs> but I'm, I'm still there. I'm one, watching him. Yeah. You know? One way or the it's other. One or right? the other. It, but it yeah. doesn't matter. It's relatable. Like whether you love it or you hate it, you at least understand his opinion, what he's talking about. And it speaks to you. And that's, that's kind of the whole point. Yeah, I know. Um, I honestly don't even think that it has to be relatable to an extent because of the fact that, you know, in basketball, the NFL, you got Skip Bayless. He like an old 80 year old, <laughs> like, that guy. you know, white man, <laughs> like he 80 year old white man. Then, of course, you got Shannon Sharp. But it's like I feel like if the soccer community had some people like them with all of this personality or Stephen A. Smith and all mm-hmm. of this personality, you know how they be back and forth on LeBron and MJ or something like that. If they was actually watch soccer, I feel like they could bring a whole bunch of eyes to the game. Like if say Skip Bayless is a Ronaldo fan or Shannon Sharp a Messi fan, and they just sitting there spending hours and hours of segments just putting heads and arguing about it, people be like, "Oh, dang! That's I got really to tune in to see what happened in the World Cup." Like you know, and then after this happened. Skip Bates, you know, he go on Twitter while the game is happening and coming and everybody <laughs> come like, bro, shut up and blah, blah, I stopped following Skip right a long there. time ago, bro. It's yeah, he like, get, exactly. I, I can't. It gets on my he, nerves. And he's he, a Cowboys fan, which is a piss I was going to say, dude. How do you guys feel about he's that? He's like representative of the whole fan base, technically. Yeah. Everybody just like, oh, Cowboys fans are annoying because Skip Bayless is annoying. Yeah. See, with That's... me, Skip Bayless, he got y'all by the balls. Because in my mind, <laughs> he, in my mind, Skip is playing a character. So I don't take, yeah. I don't take Skip serious at all. Because he's been doing this since like the 80s or 70s. Because yeah. I've seen a video on TikTok about this lady was interviewing him and he was talking about on how he felt like the most hated man in town when he first went to there because <laughs> he used to make like a lot of hate newspaper comments, newspaper prints, mm. whatever it was back in the day. They was talking about his public story in the newspaper. He was like, he feel like the most hated man in town. I'm like, damn, Skip's been <laughs> hating for 50 years now. You know? And he made a living off being a hater, bro. Yeah, like, he's exactly. still doing it. Look at Stephen A. Smith now. I mean, like, yeah. like, bro, like, like, I secretly believe that I, I, I think he's just a closeted Cowboys fan. Like, yeah, I, I yeah. firmly believe that, bro. I'm like, you, there's no way you talk about the team this much and you're not a fan. And when you come to Dallas, when when they make playoffs or whatever, and he's, you, we've all seen first take, bro. He puts the hat on, he mm-hmm. does like the little strut, the walk. No, I'm like, God, I hope we beat whoever we're playing tonight. It could be the Saints, whoever, just to shut him up, bro. Like it's yeah. so annoying. But now it I ain't gonna lie. I know I just said Skip got to by the balls, but Stephen A. I can, I can't. I know it's a character, <laughs> whatnot. I cannot stand Stephen A. Smith when he do all of that cowboy stuff, when he make the video uh, laughing and all. Yeah, that. when he's just I laughing can't about even it. Just watch it, bro. I just skip the video. Bro. <laughs> When I we lost the Niners, it. I was like, I'm not getting on social media tonight. Yeah, exactly. Not, I don't want. I don't want to see Stephen exactly A. I don't want to see him laugh for no stupid reason. It's just like, 
Bro, the biggest hater at ESPN yeah. and <clears throat> coincidentally makes the most money probably mm-hmm. at ESPN. So I don't know, man. I also don't watch Undisputed a ton anymore because sometimes Shannon and Skip just yell and I can't even yeah, make sense of it all. It's, 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 just like, it's, whatever. True. <laughs> it's true too. But yeah, yeah I feel bro. like if they cover soccer, I feel like it will bring more eyes to the game because after these games be ending, like after a Lakers game in, the first thing they be on these people's minds is like, oh, I got to go tweet at Shannon. Because the Lakers yeah. is lost, so I got to go tweet and skip. The Cowboys is lost. You know, I feel like we have like l- those level of personalities covering soccer here in America. I think it will do it will help uh, tremendously. Yeah. yeah. Do you think the timing of the sh- of the of those segments though is because I've been thinking about this a lot. Um, I actually want maybe through Goals TV, we'll figure it out. I actually want to start an MLS debate type of show because I feel like ESPN, bro, they had the rights for two years before it ever went to Apple, and they had their coverage was bad. Yeah, like, they ain't just they ain't do nothing. Bro. Nah, bro, it, it's so bad. So like when I thought about okay, like like what what would an MLS debate style show look like? Do you think even for a league as small and maybe not as competitive as the rest of the world, MLS, if they brought that type of show, do you think it could really grow a league like that? I think it can. If especially if you got people so controversial or like so personality filled, it could bring. Yeah controversial moments and then people put it on tiktok people put it on youtube and stuff like that because i'm pretty sure it's a lot of people who don't even watch sports that who have seen skip and shannon on there arguing dang they're about to go to blows with each other <laughs> i'm pretty sure it's a lot of non-sports people who know who Stephen a smith is if it's a lot of controversial moments that happen i'm pretty sure people will be able to you know oh i want to watch this so oh, i need to tune in mm-hmm. next week you know yeah I mean, bro, there's so, there has to be so many more Cowboys haters now. There just has to yeah, be, right? Yeah, just just because Stephen A by himself. Like, yeah. he's right. And then you just, you have all of this all of this ammunition to, like, go to Cowboys fans and just – at the end of the day, we're the most talked about franchise. We are America's team, whether people like to admit it or not. Yeah. Uh, and I'll, I'll I'll rep that all day, bro. I mean, you and I live in the same market. I'm a, I'm a Cowboys fan through and through. Yeah. So, yeah, man. It's, uh, it's, it's, you know, just like, you know, Andre being a Real Madrid fan. I mean, I'm sure he rocks that. Own it. He loves the hate. It never. I mean, Andre, does it, does it ever phase you, bro, being the most hated team in, in in Europe? Hated, adored, never ignored. That's all I'm gonna say, dude. You're gonna <laughs> talk about us one way or another, bro. It's That's different because they actually be winning, bro. We don't be winning. <laughs> That's actually a really good Cowboys don't be winning. <laughs> That's a really good point, dude. Yeah, bro. Oh, I, I equate the Cowboys right now, or actually over the last, like, whatever it's been, like, two decades, to Real Madrid in, like, the early 2000s, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. like yeah. probably. Like Galacticos? Yeah, the Galacticos. Yeah. Easily, easily the biggest payroll in the world, right? The A lister talent, they should win everything. And the most marketable team by far. Like, like I don't know how much money they raked in in, in that like five mm-hmm. to ten year period. Um, but they didn't win trophies, right? Nope. It was literally just like they were the most talked about team. Everybody knew who they were. I mean, you could like Beckham, Ronaldo, Zidane, they couldn't go anywhere. Dude, imagine if social media was a thing back then. Imagine oh, if like God. Twitter and Instagram was a thing, bro. With nah, all those bro. guys. Dude, are you kidding me? It wouldn't nah, even be man. close. It would it, honestly, I, I wouldn't even like people talk about oh man, I would love to, I, I I would love to have Beckham's life. No, you wouldn't, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, you couldn't even step yeah. step a foot outside without, you know, like like just being yeah. swarmed by everybody. And in a social yeah. media age, right. Nah, man. That shit would have yeah. been wild. Shit crazy. Like, yeah. like crazy, actually. I don't know, man. It's 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 when you think about how American sports compares to the beautiful game, I mean it's I'm hoping one day all these bleed together. That's just yeah. we're talking about it here. Like I hope one day, like 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 we could just like go into a casual sports bar, no big game on so- soccer wise, but just somewhere in the bar, there's there's matches being played. You got some some soccer fans mixed in with other fans, and you're just everybody's just having a good time, bro. It's not a competition. Yeah. It's we can all enjoy it together. I don't yeah. know. That should maybe that's sure. romantic. I don't know. <laughs> and when you brought up uh, not wanting to be Beckham and having social media back in the day, imagine being Luis Figo back in the day in social oh, media yeah. existed. When that yeah, that would have been the least of his yes. words. Yes. <laughs> deactivate everything, turn off DMs, A severed pig head. <laughs> yeah, bro. I mean, yeah, I mean, a pig's head hitting the field during a corner kick would have been the least of his words. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I could only it's imagine. And that's another thing too, right? Like, like I know you watched, I, I, I like a recent Arsenal game where like Ramsdale, um, it was a North London derby, right? Where we beat Tottenham, and then like a fan, oh yeah, a fan yeah. stepped on the on the on the board and like tried to kick him, <laughs> bro. If that's happening during the North London derby when it was pretty mild, like it was just a straightforward win for Arsenal, what's gonna happen in a Classico when you have like legitimately a traitor from, from yeah, going from one team was... to another? 
It's crazy, bro. bro. I mean, I would have gotten tackled by multiple people, probably. I don't know what would have happened. <laughs> it would have it been insane, bro. They would have needed, like, actual cages or, or fences to keep people out. Yeah, this stuff is crazy over there. Like, the whole difference between how much they care about football or soccer and how much <laughs> Americans care about the sport. Because, yeah. like, I was watching the documentary. You know, I learned about him through the documentary on Netflix, and I showed my girl that. And then she always say, she always like, it is not that serious. And I'm like, I want you, <laughs> you to go down it. there and tell them that it's not that serious. serious. <laughs> tell them that it's not that serious. Because it's that, it's that serious down there, man. Yeah, bro. I play. Yeah. No, nah, man. I, I, do you think sports will, I mean, any sport, do you think any sport will ever get to the point of like that here? Like mm-hmm. just, I don't want to say bloodshed because I, I don't think it always happens, but it, bro, that's not even like the, 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 the short end of it. I, I mean, Andre, you remember Carlos Tevez and when he got kidnapped yeah. because he's an Argentinian that went to go play in Brazil and he has these scars on his neck. Oh, damn. Yeah, bro. He has these scars on his neck um, where they, they kind of held him for ransom for a little bit. And so, I mean, like like in other parts of the world, they don't play. I mean, you hear about – um, there's, I think there's a movie about it on Netflix now, the Colombian striker who literally was – Yeah, yeah he was they, killed yeah, after the you know, young goal he conceded. The, yeah, yeah, the two Escobars, yeah. 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 Bro, I mean, like in other parts of the world, death. they don't, it's literally they don't life play or death. this. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. literally life or death. I mean, do, I, we're, we're not a third world country, so I don't know if we'll ever get there. But do you ever see sports fans taking it that far? Nah, even aside from life and death, just in terms of we can just even talk about England, just in terms of how much like England yeah. people care about it. We we ain't never gonna get on that level. In terms of like somebody, you know how big it will be, how much national headlines it will be. If you know how you just said the play, the fan just tried to hit Ramsdale or whatever. If somebody like ran on the NBA court and tried to like punch a player or something like that, like it made national headline when somebody dumped popcorn on Russell Westbrook when he was walking. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's so true, that? dude. I was yeah. like popcorn. We we talking yeah. about popcorn? Right now? I don't know if I was just being insensitive or I'm just no. used to like the football world or whatever. Yeah. But I'm like, bro, we put dumb popcorn on them. Like it's <laughs> American sports never gonna be on that level, man. Cause they talked no about it like for weeks too. Like all the sports shows on how to span fans to know they place and all of that. I'm like, it's just it's different cultures. It, it ain't never gonna it be is. like that over there in terms of passion wise and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the only thing I can think of where it got that bad, where like fans and the players really was was you know, I mean, Ron Artest's favorite. Yeah, Madison you know, and Yeah, yeah, bro. <laughs> I mean, Malice of the Palace was insane, and to this day, it still kind of blows my mind. And I remember when I showed my wife that, right, and she was like, "Oh, that's that's so crazy. People take that that far with sports." I'm like, "Babe, you have no idea." Yeah, yeah. Like, I know other idea. parts of the world, <laughs> this, this is mild. Like it, it could yeah. get really, really bad when you think about it. So I don't know. I it's just. It's kind of cool to see other parts of the world have that kind of passion, but at the same time, I just yeah, I don't know if we'll ever get there. Yeah, we not. No, it's it's not. different, dude. Like he, the way that I explain it is, like when you go to Europe and you go to a game there, uh, whether it's you know EPL, La Liga, Champions League, whatever, even international football, right? Like Euros or qualifiers, that game itself is part of the culture dude like you'll see yeah. girls going out on like a girls night out if the game's on a friday night or something and they will sit at the bar to watch the game like it'll be water cooler talk from say the game took place on a sunday they'll talk about it monday tuesday by wednesday you start talking about the next game which will happen on saturday thursday yeah. friday you look at lineups you look at all the, like it's constant dude and, it's and you and i talk about culture it. it's yeah. exactly it's, it's in great culture you you get in a cab the cab Drivers listening to talk radio about that team. You get on the train and people are reading actual newspapers about, you know, whatever happened in that game. Like, it's just ingrained in the culture, dude. And that, I think that's the difference between the level of fandom that you see in Europe for their, you know, for any club team or even the national team versus here. Here you'll watch, uh, for example, I'll put myself in, in their shoes. I'll watch a Cubs game on a Saturday at noon. We lose. Oh, well, whatever. At least the block, the Blackhawks play at 7 p.m. So I just move on, change my mind reset i don't give a shit about the cubs losing because all i care about is hockey like it's yeah. just very different you're always on the go there's so many things that you can pay attention to whereas football in europe that's the only thing there is that's all, the only thing they care about so yeah i know yeah. bro it's it's actually wild so i, I don't know I, I i don't think we'll i mean not in my lifetime anyway i don't think we'll get there um it'd be cool to see it go at, at some point down the road even if it's not football or soccer even if it's just regular you know sports in general i think that that's what makes 
I don't know. That's what's what makes sports so unique in comparison to anything else you can be passionate about. It's just, yeah. you don't so, have control over it. It's super competitive. You like to think you have control, but I mean, and, and, and literally it, it affects your, the rest of your day. I mean, yeah. if, if Barcelona lose, the rest of my weekend is trashed. Like, like it's just, it's just how <laughs> yeah. it is. It doesn't matter what happens, bro. Dude, it could be my birthday weekend and it won't matter. No, the other thing too is, um, I'm thinking of like stories when, when I've been in Europe, even in Mexico, like it's, it's so ingrained <laughs> yeah. in the fabric of the culture that like, mm -hmm. dude, if, if you get in a cab and you ask the, dri the driver, what's your favorite team? And then they're like, and you know, their team, they're like, how the hell do you know that you're from the U S like, you know, what the fuck? How do you know about like, you know, athletic Bilbao or whatever it is. Yeah. So it's like. For them, they love talking about football. They that's just part of the culture, and you just don't see it here at all. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, the closest thing here they get to that is like college sports, like college football yep. and college basketball. Because I went to Texas A and M, and it got crazy. Everything you talking 12, about, like man. people talk about field the game. Is crazy, yeah, bro. Cal Field is crazy. So I was yep. there when we played. Uh, the wildest game I've been to was when we played Clemson, I believe, when Trevor Lawrence was still there. Well, I went to the mm -hmm. Clemson game and Alabama game. Both Ooh, games was shit. crazy. People talk about the games Monday through Friday yep. when we first hired Jimbo Fisher. You see everybody. Well, they wasn't me. I was looking at them crazy, but they was wearing Jimbo Fisher shirts in Jimbo. Bro, what? No, no are you serious? <laughs> they wore in Jimbo. We tr they no love way. Jimbo down no there. Way, was a bro. Game oh his God, name. Dude, that's, so, that's like the in terms of passion. That's like the closest thing we can get close to like European football is uh, yeah that's actually a really good football. Point. yeah I, I mean I could see like Nick Saban <clears throat> t-shirts but like Jimbo Fisher yeah, Jim Bar, <laughs> I mean yeah. he ain't hey. been that successful I mean yeah. like he's you know he's had like a couple good I don't know bro it's just that was interesting insane. um <laughs> over the coach that's insane I, I know I've seen for the big game Ohio State Michigan you yeah. get obviously oh, yeah. um they get, I mean, they that to crazy. me is El Clasico of college football yeah, to it is. like it's just the, the, they take that shit seriously I've heard some crazy stories uh, I don't know, man. I, again, I would love to see a lot of that same passion just translate into, yeah, into, into the beautiful game, stories. but we'll, we'll, we'll definitely see. Um, all right, man, look, we're, we're, we're about the last 10 minutes in. And so what I, how I want to conclude the show today, um, we do this, this section on the show called icebreakers with every single guest. And it's always the same questions, but the stories that come from these questions, it's, uh, they're always pretty fun, bro. So some of them are soccer specific. Some of them aren't, you don't have to answer quick fire by any means. Just, you know, take your time, answer the question the, the best way you know how. And, uh, and yeah, bro, there's only 10 of them. So we're not going to take right. too long um, unless you got some pretty cool stories, in which case I'm we'll, here for it. We'll talk about them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, bro. All right. All right. We kind of talked about it already, but I'll give you another chance to answer it outright. Um, favorite club team in the world? Like in terms of uh, football? Just so yeah, soccer. Yeah, yeah. Fo football, oh, soccer uh, in general. Liverpool. Just, just favorite, favorite club team in, in the world. It, it doesn't have to be league specific, just in the world. Liverpool. Liverpool. Do you, like do you want to change your answer based on the score yesterday? <laughs> nah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just saying, Bro, what? May, I like, yeah, man. may I interest live, you in a Andre? team? May I interest you in a team that has double digit Champions League? Stop, I'm kidding, bro. I'm kidding, bro. Stop. 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 Here, you, you don't have to jump on the bandwagon, bro. I mean, we all hate Real Madrid together. Um, all right, favorite player of all time, soccer player. Oh, dang, that's a good one. I'm gonna have to go, Messi. Yes, sir. Oh, I like it. Shit. I like it. All right, all right, all right. Um, so I typically ask, and you're, you're, you, I'm sure you've played sports in some form or fashion. I typically ask most soccer players who come onto this show the best goal you've ever scored. But if you haven't played, is there, I don't know, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm an athlete myself. I played football, track, <clears throat> soccer, you name it. Any particularly memorable moment you have? Like if you yeah. were on Sports Center, what would be the top play? Yeah, bro, what would be the top? That's a great question. What would be the top play if you were on Sports Center? Yeah, so I would, this was way, way back when I still played flag football. Like, okay. you know. Oh. So it was a little – we was playing this team called the Panthers. We was probably like on a 40-yard line or something like that. I play raw receiver. So I'm like on this side and then my homeboy on the other side. We, he called a reverse. So reverse is like – shit. Y'all know what reverse is, right? Like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. But, 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 but uh, we do, but explain Ex it for explain anybody it, who yeah. does Okay, yeah. so reverse is like the quarterback hike the ball and then the one wide receiver run around back and then he give him the ball. And then I'll run across back too and the receiver who just got the ball hand me the ball and we like cross each other and like run around. Yep. So yeah, so, so double reverse. reverse. Yeah, a double reverse. Yeah, exactly. A double reverse happened. Quarterback hiked the ball. He handed it to my homeboy. Homeboy handed it to me and I just took off running 40 <laughs> oh, yards. Oh, that's sick. Little flag football. That was my first and only touchdown I ever scored, too. 
Oh, no, dude, my your only touchdown? Dollars. That has to be your top play then. 100%. Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, bro. My that's only sick, touchdown bro. I ever scored. Damn. That's tough. Bro, I'm not gonna lie. I I played uh I played football in junior high, and uh, equally I had the opposite end of the spectrum. I was running. It wasn't a double reverse. It was a single reverse. I was a receiver and a corner. And uh, bro, I I I have never been hit harder in my life. <laughs> um, I got completely destroyed and lit Trusting. up, bro. It was it, it was insane. Yeah, and I I actually pride myself on being pretty damn athletic, and bro, I got rocked. Uh, it was it was kind of embarrassing. But um, uh, and I never I, I don't think my coach ever gave me the ball in reverse again. <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling because I got like, this, this part of the reason why I quit and I played basketball because yeah. it was well one of the reasons my homeboy Jay he had tore his shoulder out of place and I was real uh, squeamish as a mm. kid he dislocated his shoulder and he was yeah. describing on how they had to pop it back in place he was mm-hmm. like they made him hold a bunch of heavy books or something like yeah. that in his shoulder like oh that. Dude. so no. that traumatized me and then probably like the week after that it was a kickoff return I ended up getting lit up we kicked the ball off and we running. To you know, tackle the dude or whatever. I ended you up got blocked, block, blindsided, or whatever. Oh, the hell. I remember that. I was like, bro, I don't want to tell that's it. I'm done. Coach, something <laughs> up, bro. I'm, I'm done. Um, <laughs> yeah, bro, 100. percent I think uh, a lot of people don't realize how physical that game really is. They'll try to compare, mm-hmm. like other sports fans around the world, try to compare it to like. And don't get me wrong, rugby is insane. I mean, yeah. there, there, there's some real contact sports out there, but bro, if you're not ready for for American football, it's it's wild. Um, all right, bro. Um, we'll change it up a little bit. Spotify or Apple Music? Spotify. Yes, sir. I, I like that answer. We got a lot of Apple Music on this show. Surprise yeah, me. it's weird. Dude, my um, girl, she she like Apple Music. I always be trying to get her to download Spotify because Apple Music be having some songs that Spotify just don't have. So yeah, I mean, some. I'll you know I'll go to YouTube Music sometimes too if I really really need to. But like, yeah, just I don't know. Spotify got a massive library. Um, mm-hmm. All right, if you could have one meal for the rest of your life, or again another variation of this, if you could, have, what, what what your last meal would be? What would it be? My last meal. Like Either your last room. meal or, or something that you could just have forever. forever. Something I could just have forever. Probably hot wings. I know that's generic. Oh, but, hell yeah. Well, I'm really like a basic as hell. Every time we go out <laughs> to eat. Every time There's we go nothing out wrong to eat, with that, bro. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that at all. That's true. That's every time we go out to eat, my girl always asks me, what you get, chicken tenders? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm getting chicken tenders while you're over here, girl. I'm getting Believe spicy it. chicken sandwich or something my like man that. looking at the menu, he's like, Nah, chicken thunder, bro. Yeah. Like, angry nah, she it. probably already knows, bro. She probably knows you're going to get, like, I don't know what I'm asking him right now. He's going to get chicken Yeah, exactly. That's exactly move what on. I'm going to get. But if it's the last meal, not hot wings. I'd say a spicy chicken sandwich. That's my go-to, right? Ooh. It don't matter. Spicy chicken sandwich is a good one. From where? Next question. Yeah. I was going to ask because this is the next where? question made. Oh. Right. From uh, where, bro? Let's hear that first. One, one definitive spot. Mm, that's hard. In terms of fast food, it would be Popeye's. Cause they say, I know some people, some people think, you know, over the whole hoopla that happened when it first came out, some people think it's overrated, you know, some people came into it wanting to hate it. So after they tasted it, they (laughs) want to hate it so much. They'd be like, uh, it's all right. But I liked it a lot. But in terms of like places to go out to eat, uh, that's hard. That's a hard question. I don't know. Maybe like this, I had a Nashville hot chicken sandwich. I forgot the specific place it was, but. I get that place. It was, it was good. That's just fine. Nice. Bro. I mean, chicken sandwiches are, are, bro, it's it's like a low risk, usually. Yeah, a low exactly. risk yeah. option. So, I mean, anybody who makes one, unless you're just terrible at yeah. making food, I mean, I, I, if you make <laughs> a hot chicken sandwich, I'm probably locked in for that too, bro. All right. Um, to piggyback on that, the and bro, I'm, I'm not too far away from you, so I can validate this shit. Best fast food restaurant near you? Near me, best fast food restaurant mm, that I go to most of the time. Mm. Andre, mm. We're, we're really not that far apart from each other, bro. Like, oh, yeah? I'm, I, I'm, I'm really curious to hear what he says. Damn. What you think I'm gonna say? Waterburger or something? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I, what, no if, I, I would, I would strike that down if Waterburger was my favorite. I mean, it's He's not like, bad, but it's Joey's like, like there's no way, it. there's no way that's your favorite, bro. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. If if you don't think Waterburger is gonna be like up there, you ain't gonna like my choice. <laughs> what is it? I'm trying to think. Dang, I want to say Wendy's, bro. Wendy's is good. I want to. You will take Wendy's over Waterburger, though. Here's the thing: Wendy's spicy chickens. I, when we're on that topic about spicy, spicy chicken sandwiches, I think before Chick Fil A ever had theirs, I was having Wendy's number six constantly. Like, and mm. the spicy nuggets, bro. Their yeah. stuff um, for me kind of set the tone. And then, like, you had years later, you had all these other players coming in the space. Uh, but that was just me. Um, Waterburger is good. 
I just had it way too much as a kid. Okay. And yeah. every now and then, I, I'll go for breakfast. Um, but like, they have a chicken tender sandwich too. That's also pretty bomb. That's yeah. pretty good. I just, I don't know. I think I think I had it way too often as a kid. And I don't go there anymore. Yeah, that's yeah. how it was for Chick Fil A with me when I lived on when I first got on campus with college. We got a Chick Fil A on campus. I ate that mm-hmm. damn near every day, and I got tired <laughs> of it. So it's just regular to me now. Because Chick Fil A yeah. would have been my answer because I used to love Chick Fil A, but I ate it so much. It's just like I feel you. So what are you picking? I'm gonna pick. Actually, I'm gonna go Golden Chick. If y'all ever heard of Golden Chick, yeah, it's a chicken spot. Yeah, I love a lot of zing sauce and they look a lot of zing packages to put on top of the uh, spicy chicken tenders. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was good. I went to uh, I went to North Texas uh, college wise, and uh, they had a golden chick on campus. Okay, and, yeah. yeah, and yeah, bro, Sick. it was. I mean, it was easy claps, hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's it's good, it's good. All right, TV or movies? Uh, I'm gonna go TV. Oh, okay. Are you watching? Man, we got anything? a lot of TV, bro. That's it. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I, I feel like people like love movies, even oh, the movies you could stream on any app. I mean, but TV, yeah. TV Do basically we... is the new movies, though. You get binge yeah, any exactly. series the minute that it yeah. comes out for real. Yeah. yeah. All right, Coke or Pepsi? Neither. Neither. Ooh, I don't you like Coke or one. Pepsi. But you don't you like, like soda? Do you like, do you like soda or yeah. just that flavor? Yeah, I just don't like Coke or Pepsi. Okay. Ooh, so okay. what's what's your soda of choice? I'm a root beer guy. Ooh, a root beer guy. Wow. I like root Damn, beer. Look at all that. Right. Well, <laughs> you don't get fella. too many of that. What's your favorite Do root beer brand? Um, A and W. Okay, yeah, for sure. Nice, bro. Do you like I root only beer get root beer if, like root beer floats? Yeah, I love root beer floats too. Yeah, yeah. Like, my daddy, he a big Dr. Pepper guy, but I don't like Dr. Pepper either. That's me. If you yeah, would ask you, me that Dr. question, Pepper? I said, DP not goes Pepsi, hard, man. DP I, I actually like it. Yeah. I don't like Dr. Pepper, bro. I don't like Dr. Pepper, Coke, or Pepsi. They all three of them. Uh, <laughs> but if I had to rank them, I'll put Dr. Pepper at one, Coke at two, and Pepsi at three. Uh-huh. If Damn, I had to rank that, that might be a, a hot take, bro. Like, I, I feel like that's a controversial. I mean, I don't know. Does anybody ever tell you that? Nah, people tell me I'm crazy for liking root beer, but in terms <laughs> yeah, of like, yeah. not liking Coke and Pepsi, I don't know. Pepsi is disgusting. That's like <laughs> one of the most disgusting I've tasted. But Coke, it's just like me to me. I went to the mm. Coca-Cola factory in Atlanta, and they just hyped it up like oh, yeah. the best thing since sliced bread. But the thing <laughs> that I've tasted, the bottle that they had at the factory that they let us taste, that was the best Coke I ever had. I was like, oh, it, this thing good. It hits different, right? Yeah, it's uh, right from the source. Yeah. Isn't there, uh, I mean, isn't that the same Coke that they make available to like McDonald's locations? It's like supposed to be actually better than any Coke better? you can find oh, anywhere else. I don't know. I never had McDonald's Coke, so. Yeah, that's what yeah, I heard, bro. I so I'm, I'm I'm also big on the gaming side and like you know people, um, you know I, I'm sure you've heard like you know esports events, whatever it may be, yeah. right? People go compete at COD and go to an event or whatever. I saw, I've seen so many times players that just like, they don't show up with energy drinks, bro. They show up with like a big ass thing Literally. of McDonald's Coke. And they're, <laughs> they're just cracked, bro. Like the whole yeah. day, like they're just locked in. I don't know. It's, it's, they might as well take an energy drink, to be honest. Um, all right. AirPods or headphones? AirPods. I mean, you got yeah, AirPods got in right, now. right now. It was probably yeah. a dumb question, to be honest. But. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, home cooked meal or are you eating out? Eating out. And that's no yeah. slight on my mama, but I just like, <laughs> eating out it's easy it's stuff. convenient yeah and you could try a bunch of different stuff is so outside of fast and, food restaurants i mean is there like a, a restaurant you like to eat out at um nah i can't think of one specifically i'm always trying new restaurants so it's That's not good. one that i just be like oh we need to go out to eat here because i honestly i honestly don't like going out. I don't like sitting at restaurants. I like to always get my stuff to go. So yeah, I go fast out. food majority Makes of the sense. time. But in terms of me, yeah. if I got to cook myself, like when I was in college, I'd rather just go and go get something to eat. I go grab it, come back, yeah, chill, chill like do your cooking. thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I feel that, bro. I'm the same way. I, I like convenience and I like to eat in my house. I like to eat, you know, mm. in my domain, bro. Like it's just, I'm comfortable. It's, you know, I can watch Actually, what I want to watch. I can eat what I want to eat. My favorite uh, dining in place is Texas Roadhouse. Interesting. Ooh, All right. shit. Okay. For the bread? Yeah, the bread. And I like they what I get at Texas Royal House, I get they uh they shrimp. They grilled shrimp. Oh. They shrimp. That is real good. I man. haven't had it. It's like shrimp and rice and then it come with a and I get the baked potato side. The mm, loaded baked potato. Nice. Yeah. I get that every time I go. Nice, bro. Sick. Good shit. Yeah. All right. Um a couple more questions. Um, where do you want to travel the most? Um right now. Hmm. I don't really travel like that, so that's a good question. 
What do I want to go? Yeah, to I ever wanted to go somewhere just by seeing the people or seeing things on social media. Yeah, like I used to want to go like... to Japan, but now that ship is shit. Oh. That was like a phase for me. <laughs> like, you know, I did watch co- a lot of anime and stuff, and you know, it'd be looking wow. live over there that I see. On Dude, yeah, that that answer has been actually pretty popular. Like, the, I yeah. feel like the last three or four people that have been on the show in like Japan, dude, for sure. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, it's a culture shock thing. Like, yeah. I, I want to. I don't know. Like some people find it intimidating, right? You go to a new country, mm-hmm. you, know, yeah. you see a bunch of things that you just you can't read the language. You don't know how it works. But like that to me is like the fun part of exploring a completely brand new yeah. area, and like the uh, trying out the food, talking to the people. I don't know, bro. It just it, it kind of gets me excited. Just and of course, when you see pictures of Japan or Tokyo or whatever, oh, yeah, it looks it's sick, beautiful. Yeah. It looks insane. I just I, I want to just soak it in live, like not see a picture. But yeah. all right, last one. If money wasn't an object. What's the one thing you're buying? Oh, sorry. If I can just buy anything that I want. Yeah. Anything, bro. I mean, it could literally be anything. Don't put any barriers on it. What would it be? Uh, dang. It's not really a lot of things that I just want right now or that I just have to have. But uh, I'll probably buy like... Hmm. Maybe like a trip to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, it's limited. Okay, so this okay, all right. It could be experiences. Anything, yeah, anything, anything, money on. Could be anything, anything. anything I can spend money anything. on. Anything. I'll probably buy like a big ass customizable house, like my own big customizable oh, house. Everything customized the way I want it. Just one time payment, no rent, no utilities. Buy the cash, just bro. Buy the cash. cash. Straight everything. cash. One big ass house customized to my liking. Sick. Bro, you, you know when you customize a house, I mean, you literally have to pick everything, right? Yeah. So, like, the 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 color of the grout in the tile. Like, <laughs> yeah, like you got to cool. pick everything, bro. Like, you got to pick the type of light bulb you want, you know, like, all Bathroom handle. It's, it's, all yeah, the, shit, the handles on the doors, bro. I'm like, I don't... I don't know. You pick. Like I don't. I don't <laughs> yeah. care. Well, yeah, my but pick I, is... I, I agree. A, a fully customizable house would be awesome. But it ain't that, just I like mean... a regular house. It's gonna be like on some like mansion type shit. Like so, with a good I mean, ass like a smart house. Too. Uh, it don't necessarily got to be a smart house. Just one of those big ass like. You know, you ever seen Drake mansion or house that he live in? It was on one of his I, I music think so. videos. He yeah, had, okay, okay. Yeah. Yes, I want one of them type of big ass houses. I don't know what I'm gonna do with all the space, but at least I have it. Though. <laughs> I need a basketball court in it. I need yeah. a basketball court outside. I need a get an arcade pitch. going. Yeah, yeah. I need, bro. Are, are, you, are, you, are you gonna do it like Rick Ross, where he tends his own land? Like he's he a massive house too. And yeah. he, he does all the mowing. He does he everything. He does. Damn. That's too much work for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I ain't gonna do that, but yeah, because I no, mean, you take a lot of pride, you know. And just yeah, that's true. That's true. But for me, it's like the only reason I say house is because it's not really a lot of things that I'm not really like a real materialistic person. It's just yeah, like if you gave me a whole bunch of money now and told me to buy something, I wouldn't know what to buy. It's just like I don't yeah, really yeah, want that's anything fair. right now. You know, that's fair. No, I like that, bro. That's a great answer. Um, all right, man. Well, we did it. We made it to the end of the show. I think we got a lot of great content for anybody who's tuning in. Uh, Rashad, man, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Uh, I think we learned a lot about you and I I'm hoping that, you know, we, we were able to get some of your typical viewers in here and they can learn even more about you. And I don't know, maybe this is something that we can use to help you start a new channel or uh, branch outside of the fan reaction content. That's your dream, bro. I want to be able to help enable that in any way that I possibly can. So that's our mission here at box to box and at goals TV. And so, uh, before we let you go, I mean, is there anything you're working on that you want to give a shout out to? This is kind of your moment to, to throw it all out there. Right now, I'm working on bringing the best content possible. I'm trying to get the Twitch streams back popping because I know a lot of y'all want the Twitch streams and stuff like that. It just be better and stop being lazy because my fans <laughs> be wanting me to do so much stuff. They be wanting me to, you know, game blogs, go out and interview people. They wanted me, want me to do all of this stuff. So just better, bring out better content for my fans, man. Nice. Dude. I like it, man. I like it. Well, look, guys, we're going to link all of Rashad's socials down below as well as his YouTube channel down below. Um, and look, I think if Rashad starts a second one or wants, you know, wants to get more content out there, you guys should tune in. Uh, the fan reactions hold up well as someone who's watched every type of reaction on this channel, whether it's MMA or basketball or soccer or whatever it may be. Bro, you, your personality just it brings it to, to a whole new level. And if you want, I'll probably link my favorite reaction video. It was actually the Bayonne d'Or um, ceremony <laughs> when you were like 
flaming people for what they were wearing and oh the uh, <laughs> skip. yeah yeah the trippers <laughs> yeah, bro that honestly it was it was fantastic i loved it because it, it is super basic it's a very black and white type event and like you you brought it to the people in a way that i don't think most people out there could so yeah guys go check out his stuff we're gonna link it all down below and again thank you for supporting the channel like the video if you can it really does help us out and uh from all of us here at box to box we'll see you guys next time thank you so much <laughs>